Welcome to Wisconsin in Focus. I'm J.D. Davidson. More opposition is coming for the Milwaukee Public Schools' proposed tax referendum. The Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty actually developed a tax calculator so Milwaukee citizens can find out exactly how much more they will be paying for their public school system if the issue passes. Joining us today is Ben Yount, Wisconsin contributor for the Center Square. Ben, Will's criticism of Milwaukee schools is similar to others. What do they hope the new calculator will tell people? Well, they hope that it makes this idea of a referendum real, right? First of all, we're we're dealing with a, a tax increase that is going on the April ballot. And, you know, spring elections are notoriously undervoted. Most people don't realize that it's Election Day on April 2nd here in Wisconsin. And and, and to make matters worse, the, the, the presidential race isn't excited. It's all done. By, by the time Wisconsin gets into the game, this thing has been wrapped up. So there's no national driving force of, oh, we've got to go. And this is the last chance for Marco Rubio. And please turn out. The the reality is that this is about constitutional ref, constitutional amendments. And these school referendums and Milwaukee, of course, is the biggest two hundred fifty two million dollars. But it's because Milwaukee is the the largest school district in the state. But what what Will is hoping here is that the people of Milwaukee who are going to pay this because this is going to be a property tax increase that Will wants the people who are actually going to pay it, not the the, the the supporters with the public schools or the elected officials or, or the sort of well-heeled donors who can afford to pay this. Will hopes that, that rank-and-file, everyday, work-a-day folks go and take a look and realize, okay, if, if we're going to have a 30-something percent property tax increase, what's that mean to me? And this isn't just for homeowners. They've got a bug in there that allows you to do this for rent. And when you start telling people, hey, your rent's going to go up by 100, 200, maybe 300 bucks in order to pay for this tax increase, that makes this real. And all of a sudden, people start to say, okay, well, what am I getting? If my rent's going up, what am I getting from all this money that the schools are going to be taken from me? You know, it's interesting. You and I are old enough to have lived through countless school tax referendums. And, and, and the, the, the old way of, of looking at that, if you were the school system, is, well, it was only 100 bucks on a $100,000 home, and it's not that big a deal, and, and we need to do this for schools. Actually having something in place, there aren't many $100,000 homes anymore to start with, but actually having something in place where I can see this is going to cost me an additional $490 a year, an additional thousand dollars a year when you put that into real money that's going to make people really examine these types of referendums we talked to kyle conan with will about this and he said look you got to remember most people who live in milwaukee live in poverty the median income in milwaukee is about fifty thousand dollars a year the median home price is just a uh, hundred thousand dollars a year. It's not, you know, we're not talking about large stretches of affluent suburb. This is Milwaukee, which is one of the poorest cities in the state of Wisconsin. And while, while some folks can say, well, it, you know, it's, it's an extra hundred, hundred bucks on a hundred thousand dollar home. I mean, okay, but you know what? It's for the schools and we, we, we want to make sure that the kids have the good schools. And you know what? If they're going to build that new football field, go tigers and, and, and all of that stuff. But when you go to people who are barely making 50 grand to, to people who are already pinching pennies because, you know, the price at the grocery store is up, the, the, the price of gas is up, the price of everything is up. And then you say, hey, yeah, we, we want an extra $400-ish per year from you so that we can give a raise to the school nurse. We really want to fund some mental health initiatives. So your rent is going to go up 100 bucks a month every month all year. That becomes a, a much more difficult sell. That's real money. And it makes this question of what are we getting from this extra tax, this, this tax hike makes that question even more real. And, and don't forget, 
Will is also asking the question that, that so many opponents of this MPS tax hike are asking in that, well, is this going to help schools? Is this going to help kids? Is this going to do anything other than pay for pay raises for people who work for Milwaukee public schools? You have a number of people who are pointing out that Milwaukee public schools just aren't producing the grades, the reading scores, the writing scores. It was, what, just last week that we had the op-ed from the CEO at Northwestern Mutual who said Milwaukee schools are among the worst in the nation. The Milwaukee Chamber of Commerce, the MMAC, pointed out that you have single-digit reading proficiency in some schools in Milwaukee. And Will is asking the question that so many people are asking, all right, we're going to give Milwaukee public schools this money, but what are they going to do with it? And, and is it going to help kids and not just people who work at the district? And as Kyle Conan said in the piece that we filed just the other day, MPS doesn't have a plan for this. They're not telling parents. They're not telling taxpayers. They're not telling anyone how this money is going to be spent. He said it's like the, the line from Nancy Pelosi during Obamacare. We've got to pass this first. Then we can see what's in it. And, you know, voters will ultimately have have the call. They will make the decision on on April 2nd. But there is a unified voice from a lot of people saying vote no. You know, this is kind of interesting with those voices that are saying vote no. I'm interested in kind of the connection with the chamber, the employees at Northwestern Mutual. How many of them are actually going to be able to vote? The other thing is, it seems to me the timing comes perfectly for Milwaukee public schools. There are no state, really major statewide issues on the ballot in Wisconsin in April. No president, nothing driving turnout. If you want a tax increase, the tradition has always been we want we want to have that vote when nobody's going to show up to vote. There are nearly 200 school districts in Wisconsin that are asking for about a billion dollars in all uh, with school referendum questions on the April 2nd ballot. So you're right. Spring elections, low turnout. It generally bodes well for the school district because, again, the teachers union, the, the people who support this. Uh, you had a bunch of Milwaukee elected leaders, state lawmakers and the like go out earlier this week and say, oh, you, you, you absolutely need to vote. Yes, it is the state to blame for our funding issues. The, the CEO at Northwestern Mutual, Northwestern Mutual is one of downtown Milwaukee's largest employers. But you've got an awful lot of salaried insurance workers who, while they work in the city, they may not live in in the city. The, the Milwaukee Chamber speaks for the business community. The Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, while it is headquartered in Milwaukee, it definitely does not have most of its support in Milwaukee. It is going to remain to be seen just what happens. But, you know, don't forget that Milwaukee public schools have been losing students, not just because of the, the demographic bubble that's working its way through public education, but you've had a lot more families choose school choice. You've had a lot more families choose open enrollment. And MPS has, has got a problem where they've been losing students for years. They have buildings that are mostly empty. They refuse to right size. And so this, even though it's a quarter of a billion dollar ask, I can promise you this won't be the last time. This won't be the last time in the next few years that MPS is going to have to ask for a tax increase. Every single dime here is going to day to day operations. We're not building schools. We're not updating schools. This is just $250 million to cover paychecks between now and, well, whenever the next time it is that MPS feels that it needs to go and ask for more money. Well, the good news is we'll know in a couple of weeks what happens. Ben, thanks for joining us today. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. Some people would call him a loser. He ran for state office. He was beaten. He started a business. He failed. He ran for Congress. He lost. He was nominated for vice president. He lost again. But he knew only those who never tried are the real losers. And Abraham Lincoln was no loser. Persistence. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at Value. 